All right, it's three after. Why don't I go in and get started? I assume you guys can see my screen, right? Yep. Okay. Um, actually, just in case, right? Ginger, are you have are you able to come off mute yet? Okay, not yet. We'll get we'll circle back around. All right. First on the agenda, community time. Is there anybody uh, from the broader community who isn't usually part of this call who'd like to bring up a topic for discussion or ask question, provide feedback, anything along those lines? I think everybody's a regular, unfortunately. All right, not hearing anything. We'll keep moving forward. Uh, next week is the 4th of July week or holiday in, uh, in the States. I believe, I'm just double check, what day of the week does it fall on? 4th of July is Wednesday. Um, now, sometimes people do take vacation uh, before or after that date. So I'm wondering whether we're going to have enough people on the call next week or whether people are going to make um, are going to be on vacation and we should skip to next week's call. So let me ask this question. Uh, who will be on the call next week? I would like to be able to skip, but I won't skip if we have a call. You said you'd like to be able to skip? Yeah. Because okay. I will be on vacation, but I'll call it back. <laughs> okay. I can volunteer Clemens. He should be back next week. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we have at least one person from Microsoft to be there. What about other people? I'm sorry, say that again? Whoever that was speaking, it's very hard to hear because of a lot of background noise. Sorry, Doug, it was a read. Uh, Yaron and I can attend the next a meeting next week okay. as well. Okay. What about some of the US-based folks? Off. Off. Uh, Alibaba can attend a call too. Okay. Some of us are reporting in the chat too, Doug. Oh, there you go. Thank you. I missed that. Adobe the whole week. Wow, that's pretty cool. Okay. Um, aside from Adobe and I, I and Google, um, it seems like a lot of fair number of people might be able to make it. I'm inclined to to keep the call just because I I know that we tend to be U.S. centric on things, but in this particular case, it sounds like. Uh, we may actually have enough U.S.-based folks, and that obviously the non-U.S.-based folks will probably be here. I'm inclined to say we keep the call. What do people think? Yes, Doc, are you talking about the July 5th call? Yes, July 5th, yes. Oh, okay. okay. So I will be on vacation for the two weeks after that. <laughs> okay. Lucky you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Um, I don't know. What do people think? Um, people okay with keeping the call? I know it's not ideal for some of the U.S. folks, but um, hopefully if there's something that uh, you'd like us to skip, you just mention it and we'll, we'll, we'll try to skip that particular topic. Would it, are people okay with that? Okay, I'm not hearing any objections, so we're going to keep the call. Sorry, guys. Um, all right, next on the agenda, a new logo. Austin, we gave you a week to create a PR, and you said you've not done it yet. Now, does that mean that it's still something you want us to hold off on, or should we assume that we should go with the current logo? Um, it, it's up to all of you. I, I would love to do this. I just haven't gotten to it this past week. But at some point, you have to call me out as a blocker and just move forward. Um, I'd love one, one additional week to give this a shot. And if I, if I don't deliver, then you should move on without me. And that, that'll just be the way it is. Okay. I personally, I'm okay with the logo as it is, but I'm also okay with giving you a week. Um, is there anybody on the call who objects to one more week? Yeah. Or okay. is there anyone that feels the same way and could work with Austin to come up with a PR for it? It, yeah, people want to submit other ideas. Um, absolutely, I'm sure everyone would welcome that. What is the objection with the current logo? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, this personal opinion. It it looks a little unmodern, um, and I think that there, with a few tweaks, especially around the font, um, it could look maybe a bit, a bit more modern, and a bit more fresh. 
Um, so I'd, I'd like to try that. And I, I gave myself one week to deliver and then I, I did deliver because uh, I've been swamped. So I'm asking for, for one more week. And if anyone else feels like they want to contribute some other, uh, some other ideas, I, I think we should absolutely welcome that. But after next week, we, we should just move forward with what we have. If, if we don't have something else that we'd like more by then. Okay, so let's do this. Let, let's give you one more week. And if somebody wants to join in the, uh, the redesign, please ping Austin offline. Um, as I mentioned in the agenda, I did get a coupon code for 100 free stickers. So obviously, I'm not going to do anything with that until we resolve it next week. Um, but I guess that's about it then. Uh, any other any comments, questions, concerns about that plan? I and mean, luckily, we don't have a. I don't think we have a conference uh, coming up in the near future that we may, that we might that we may want those 100 stickers at. So I think we do have some time. But I do want to get this resolved sooner rather than later, especially since once the new design comes forward, we will have to take a vote, and that will take some time too. So okay. Any other questions, comments? All right. Uh, moving forward then, Austin, SDK subwork group. Want to bring us up to speed on what happened there? Absolutely. On Monday of this week, we had the uh, an initial call around designing the Cloud Events SDK. Um, <clears throat> it seemed like a bunch of people were already working on this independently uh, and a bunch of different companies. Um, so we said, hey, maybe there's a maybe we should do this together. And then that kind of uh, inspired this call. Um, so a handful of people jumped on the call, VMware, SAP, Red Hat, Google, and uh, we chatted loosely about this. Uh, we were able to draft out use cases, features, goals for the SDK. Uh, we were able to rank them by priority. Uh, we were also able to organize them into uh, potential versions of the SDK. And lastly, we found volunteers for implementations across various languages, those languages being Java, Go, JavaScript, and Python right now. So pretty good progress. Um, we've tracked everything in the Cloud Events SDK design proposal Google document, which you can see, I think that's in this working group um, Google doc, right, Doug? I just put the link into the uh, agenda, yes. Cool. Um, every, you know, everything that we discussed has been organized into this doc. It should be uh, pretty accessible for everyone who wasn't able to attend uh, to quickly check it out and get up to speed. Um, but that's what we were able to accomplish. Uh, I think next steps uh, that we decided were to present these kind of use cases and priorities to all of you, the broader working group, and get some feedback. Um, and once we kind of get that feedback and you know agree on these priorities, I, I think we still need to do some work to clarify the scope of each of the initiatives that are listed in there. Um, and so anyway, maybe I'll, I'll stop there and um, we could kind of go over, I could go over the, the priorities uh, that we came up with real quick. And if anyone has any comments, um, objections, or other ideas, maybe we could time box this and um, have a quick discussion about it. Yeah, I was going to definitely try to time box it if possible. Um, yeah, but any, any initial questions, comments for Austin? Okay, maybe you could quickly go through the uh, prioritized list you guys came up with. Sure thing. And again, this isn't a Google Doc. Uh, a lot of people are already commenting on it. Um, so you don't have to speak up within this uh, small time box. You could always speak, speak up later um, by adding a comment on the Google Doc. Uh, number one, the first initiative that we felt was the most important was to simply be able to instantiate cloud events easily in code uh, per the current cloud event specification um, and have some simple APIs around those instances that you create to get and set uh, data on the cloud event instance um, and work with the cloud event uh, more easily. Um, you should be able to, you know, also kind of mock these things out for testing. Um, uh, in addition to that, we, we like to figure out how to design this SDK to support um, different versions of the cloud event specification. You know, we think we're still going to be iterating on the, on the core spec for a while and the SDK needs to think about that from the beginning. Um, so there should be a way to easily set the, you know, the cloud events speci specification version that we want to work with um, or that the user wants to work with within the SDK. Um, so that was the first priority and that we felt was kind of the simplest thing we could do today to get to enable users to start using cloud events as fast as possible. 
Um, the second big priority was to assemble cloud events from various transports and encodings and have the SDK help with some of that work. Um, and to do this, adhering to the various kind of transport specifications that we're working on right now, like HTTP, AMQP, uh, NATS, webhooks, MQTT. Um, that was the second priority we felt was, was important. Uh, third, instantiate, instantiating uh, cloud events easily via event schemas. Um, and this specifically means the schema of the data within the cloud events data attribute and not the entire cloud event itself. Um, so being able to pass in an event schema and, and using that to create you know, e uh, easier defaults of cloud events uh, to do some validations, uh, to be able to validate the cloud event uh, by that schema um, and even more easily generate mock events uh, from that schema as well. Uh, number four, fourth priority was transforming existing events into cloud events via um, some type of transformation mappings. Um, you know, there's a lot of popular events that are out there, whether it's they're on a big uh, cloud provider um, or maybe it's just a webhook from a popular SaaS service. Um, if there's a way that we could kind of build some intelligence into the cloud events SDK to be able to work with those, you know, popular events and easily convert them into, uh, into simple cloud events, uh, we felt we could kind of integrate into the existing ecosystem more easily um, and make cloud events have kind of a, a broader appeal right away. Uh, lastly, there was um, a creative suggestion to have the cloud events SDK uh, sort of have an add-on or a module feature that could work with some of the extensions um, that are part of the cloud events core specification. Uh, so within the cloud event specification, there's an option to add on custom data um, for different use cases. And we think the SDK should also have a story here uh, where, you know, say that there's a piece of data you know, within the cloud events envelope that seeks to solve kind of tracing problems. Um, if there was a way that the cloud event SDK could kind of have an add on module that helps you, you know, work with that data with the SDK, we think that would be um, kind of have a nice offer, a nice extensibility story. Um, you know, enable end users to kind of build their own, ex, um, to use their own extensions with, on the specification and kind of integrate that into the Cloud Events SDK as well as vendors, you know, vendors who might have some, um, some kind of proprietary things that they want to put on the Cloud Events envelope and also have a nice story with, uh, with inside the SDK. Um, so that was the fifth priority uh, we felt was important. Um, that's everything. We're able to move these into Cloud Events uh, SDK versions, um, which you can see in the document below that. And these are kind of replicated here within the specific versions, and some of them have a bit more detail. Um, so that's it. Maybe I'll, I'll pause. If anyone has questions or comments, uh, let us know. All right. Any questions for Austin? So when will the um, code uh, implementation um, be started? Good question, Kathy. Um, a lot of people have already started these. So uh, for example, Matthias, Matthias over at Red Hat and his crew um, are, are cruising along on the Java implementation. Uh, I know Mark Peak and uh, his crew over at VMware and Dispatch have a Go uh, version in the works. Um, there's a Python version that has already been started. Um, and I think that it's, you know, this is one question that I wanted to raise to this group. Um, you know, we've laid out the milestones and scope for the Cloud Events SDK version. And I think that's an important exercise uh, to kind of stack rank what we think the priorities are and get aligned on what the, on what the SDK design should look like across languages. However, I'm not personally feeling like this should be used to block anyone. Uh, I think if people, you know, who are doing the implementations, working together on the implementations within various languages, want to move potentially faster and get to some of these later stage features faster, I think they should be perhaps free to do that. So um, related to that though, Austin, mm -hmm. you guys talk about where the code for these things would actually sit. Oh yes, um, we discussed it, uh, the cloud events, uh, GitHub repo um, seems to make Make absolute sense there. Cool. Okay. Yeah, I agree. Just want to make sure. Okay. 
This likely is Rachel. We will, we'll, likely we will stage in uh, external repos and then have a have a review of it before moving it into something like Cloud Event. Okay, cool. Thank you, Mark. Uh, Rachel, were you going to jump in there? Yeah. Are there going to be future meetings or was that like the kickoff and you feel pretty good about the design and now you're fully implementing it? Yeah, that was going to be the last item I was going to bring up here after just getting some feedback on those priorities. Um, you know, I think, I, I think that we should do an additional meeting just to clarify some of this, the scope of the initiatives that we've prioritized, because uh, some of them can be quite broad and hopefully align on design patterns um, so that these, these implementations can look more consistent across runtimes. So I think that would be, um, that would be a good, good subject matter to discuss in an upcoming call. But perhaps after that, I'm not sure if we need to do a, a recurring call um, I think we should let people implement for a little while and then do kind of a check-in, you know, once we think uh, we have a few implementations on the table. So when were you planning on having the next call then? Um, I was going to put out a, a doodle poll again, um, get people's input, see when they're available. We do have this holiday coming up next week, so I wasn't thinking it's was going to be next week, but maybe the week after next. Okay. So Austin, so after the call, uh, I assume you are going to post uh, on the design pattern spec uh, so that we can take a look. It, sh it should be in the, um, in the serverless working group meeting minutes, right, Doug? Uh, the link to the, to, the, um, to the design doc, yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's right here. Yeah, it's right in there, Kathy. So it's, it's already linked. Oh, and, so this, uh, this call is a design, okay. 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 Any other questions or comments on, on all this? All right. I guess I'm hearing it. Cool. Thank you guys very much. I'd like you made a lot of good progress. This is exciting. Yeah. Every, everyone's already kind of jumping into implementation. People are moving really fast. Um, you know, I, I'm personally really excited about this. I think we've, we're doing some important work here. We have a great spec on the table and now these SDKs are gonna make it more accessible and, and make it real um, and allow people to put this into their, you know, start actually using this stuff more easily than ever. So excited to see the enthusiasm around this and I think we're gonna make a lot of progress uh, quickly. Yeah. All right, any last comments, questions? All right, cool, moving forward then, Kathy. On the workflow working group, um, I know you set up a doodle poll and you're meeting every Tuesday, but did you meet this Tuesday or is, or is the first meeting next week? Uh, the next week is the first meeting. So I just want to let everyone know, everyone know that, you know, it's every Tuesday. It's, it's an ongoing, ongoing meeting. So it's starting July 3rd, I believe, correct? Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, quick thing, Kathy, like I... I've kind of struggled a couple of times to figure out what's happening. I didn't know how to get in touch with you. I was trying to reach on Slack, reply, I wrote on the doodle. I don't know what's the best way for us to kind of communicate to kind of make sure people know this is happening. Obviously this meeting is one way to do it, but I don't know, like for the SDK meetings, I know when they were happening because they all posted on Slack. Yeah, Kathy, oh. maybe you could send out a note and put some more messages on Slack, making sure everybody understands that the first meeting is next Tuesday. Okay, yeah, I will do that. Um, awesome, thank you. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. And I'm, I'm happy to jump in and help as and when you need. So feel free to reach out. Okay. So who is it, please? You know. Oh, sorry. This is this is Varun from oh. Project Oracle. Yeah. From where? Oracle. Yes. Oh. Okay. Yeah. What okay. time Tuesday? No, it's uh, yeah, it's ten. So this is about ten thirty a.m. to eleven thirty a.m. Um, Pacific time, Pacific day time. That's the most, that's uh, the time slot that gets a majority vote. And is that also going to take place over Zoom or is there another place where that meeting is going to take place? Same Zoom channel. Cool, thanks. Yeah. Keeps it easy. All right, any other comments, questions? Oh, also. Questions? Uh, I think, you know, um, for people who are um, interested in this topic, uh, I have a, a Google Doc 
um, that drafting the um, that drafts the um, the uh, kind of overview of the um, workflow. So if you can take a look, that would be good. Um, can you be fair, Kathy? I just put a, a Google Doc comment or a bullet on that work item. Uh, and, I'm sorry, on that agenda item. Can you add the link to there so yeah. that you can easily find it? Yeah. Thank you. I could. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you very much. Okay. You're welcome. Uh, hey, hey, Doug. Yep. Got a just a, a quick uh, a quick announcement. Mm -hmm. um, since the idea of doing kind of logo iterations was brought up earlier on the call, a few, a few people have reached out to me on Zoom uh, who are also, I believe, design neurotics like myself. <laughs> and um, they're asking where they could post potential suggestions. I'm going to make a uh, issue within the Cloud Events spec uh, repo right now. It's just going to be called logo improvements. Um, if you have suggestions for logos, uh, I recommend just putting them just pasting the artwork right in that issue thread and uh, hopefully doing this all before next Thursday. And then next Thursday, we could kind of look at these and, uh, and vote on them together. That sounds good. Thank you, sir. All right. Any other comments, questions on the uh, workflow working group from Kathy? All right, moving forward then. So we have two issues, which we said we we're going to close unless someone spoke up to, oh, that's weird, there we go. Unless someone speaks up to claim uh, to be a champion of these two issues. So the first one was this conformance with JSON API spec. I haven't seen anything um, claiming to be an owner. Is there any final objection to closing this one? And, and just remember, this doesn't mean we can't reopen it, but at this point in time, without someone willing to champion us moving forward on this, um, it doesn't seem like there's much interest in it, but we can't reopen it if, if that changes in the future. So any objection to closing this one with no action? All right, and what about the other one? Alignment with IETF security event token. Again, I don't believe there's been any interest from anybody in this one. Any objections to closing? All right, done. Thank you guys very much. All right, moving on to the bulk of the meeting, uh, PRs. First one, the primer. I don't believe this has had any comments in quite some time. It's been out there. Um, uh, yeah, I think there was one minor typo from Mark that he noticed. Aside from that, it's basically been untouched. So uh, as a um, just as a reminder, this is not meant to be the final version of anything. Just like all the other specs in our repo, this is just sort of the first draft. For the most part, I just rearrange things. I try to move things like uh, use cases, references to existing um, event format and stuff out of the main spec itself into the primer and to add a little bit of text, try to explain some of the history of the group itself, where we're going, design goals, and stuff like that. And this way we'll keep the spec itself focused on sort of the normative text itself and any sort of ramblings or background history, that kind of stuff, we can move into this primer doc and have it all in one spot for people to read as background material. Um, I don't want to necessarily go through it all right here, but as you can see, most of it is just moving stuff around for the most part. That's why you see a lot of deletes um, and then copied into the new doc itself. Are there any questions on this? Any concerns for any reason people want to wait a little bit longer before we accept this or discuss the it. The only thing I see is where did all of the stuff that's deleted go to? Actually, you know what? As I was scrolling, I was wondering where the big chunk of green would be, and I didn't see it, so hold on a minute. There it is. Oh, that's why. You have to load the diff. There we go. <laughs> okay. I got a little panic there for a second. <laughs> yeah, so it's all there's all the green stuff. So, so Doc? Mm-hmm. Well, I see that you know the use cases are removed, but I didn't see it was it is you know those are added. Yeah, they the, should be they should be in this uh, primer doc itself. I may have called it. Uh, I think I might have changed the title from use cases to roles and proposition and value proposition more than anything else. Oh, you changed the name. Okay. Yeah, I just I just changed the title, but the the text itself should still be there. So it's called roles now. The use cases. Um. I can't remember which one went to which section, to be honest. I think part of the use cases did go to roles, and then and then some of it, I think, pop, showed up under value proposition, because that seemed to be more appropriate title than use cases. 
but obviously we can change the titles if you guys want. I don't, I don't really care that much about the titles, but the text itself should still be there. Okay. Yeah. The reason I asked is because I, I did not find the use cases, use case I put in before. So maybe it's because of the title change or yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Double check. But I'm pretty sure I did include everything. Okay. Um, Hey Doug, I think given that the questions are being asked, perhaps this is called action for people to review it, and then we can approve this next week. That's that's fine as well. I have no objection to waiting. It's just um, so people have a week to yeah. review and make sure that the sections got trans transposed correctly. Is that okay, with everybody? Yeah. Okay. So please review it. We'll, we'll vote on it next week. All right. Any other last minute questions or comments on that? All right. Um, actually, Th Thomas. Thomas is traveling. Uh, I was going to say, yeah. Makes it the next better. we can delay for a week. Well, let, let me do this. Let me, let me, let's take a look at them because they seem to be fairly straightforward PRs. If we, people are okay with it, I wouldn't mind accepting them. But if there's any concerns, then we can wait. Um, so factor distributed tracing extension into a new doc. Basically on this one, I believe what Thomas did is he took the current text from the extensions.md doc, moved it into its own distributed tracing doc in a directory called extensions. So he just basically moved it into its own doc. And then he added some boilerplate text in the extensions.md doc, um, basically mm -hmm. talking about uh, uh, you know, how the normative, I'm sorry, the, uh, the RFC keywords apply only within the context of the extension itself. Meaning, for example, um, I believe down here, let's keep a concrete thing, uh, down here, when he says this is required, that means it's only required if you're choosing to use the extension. It doesn't mean it's required, you know, for all, for all uses of the cloud eventing spec itself. But for the most part, I don't think he actually made any real changes it was more of moving text around than adding some explanation around the RFC keyword stuff. As I said, I don't, I don't want to rush this, um, but it did seem fairly straightforward to me. I was wondering if people need more time to review it, if people are okay with it. What was the current thought process here? So is it, is it correct that in the future, all extensions should go under the extension directory? Correct. There will be basically a, like a table of contents right here in extensions.md. And then yes, each extension will have its own file under the extension directory. Okay. Any other questions? Do people want more time to review it? If you're okay with it as is, as a first pass? You guys are kind of quiet. I'm okay approving it, but I don't want to rush people. Yeah, I don't want to rush people either, but as I said, it, it, it did seem fairly straightforward to me. So let me pose the question, and please, if you want more time to review it, to, to speak up, there's no, there's no concern there, but let me ask the question, is there any objection to adopting this PR? Going once. All right, we'll approve it. Thank you, guys. Um, next one is again from Thomas. This was an action item coming out of our face-to-face. -face. Correct, yes. Really straightforward. He just added some items to our roadmap. Just to, he, basically, I believe here the point is he wanted to add um, the idea of making sure we actually looked at the specification from a constraint perspective. You know, our are we, do we need to add limitations on sizes to, uh, to values and stuff like that? Just wanted to make sure that, uh, you know, that the real world constraints actually were reflected properly in our analysis here. So we just wanted to add these to our milestones or to our roadmap. And it's fairly straightforward and short list. And it looks like that's to 0 0.3. Yes, let me just make it a little bigger. Yes, 0 0.3. I'm fine with it. Okay. Any other comments, questions? Okay. Let me ask the question then. Is there any objection to adopting this PR? All right. 
not hearing any. Thank you guys very much. All right, next one. Um, Vlad asked that we not vote on this one, but I do want to bring it up just to ask if there are any questions or concerns on it. This PR is related to something we talked about, I believe at the face-to-face, -face, and actually probably even before that. It's the idea of removing the, the bag that we had for extensions or the map that we had for extensions and treating extensions as top-level entities. Um, so the bulk of the PR is actually right here. And here's the only real norm, uh, normative text. Basically, uh, then producers may include additional extension attributes. And then um, if you're typing, can you please go on mute? Um, so event producers can include additional extensions. They appear as top level attributes. Uh, but the, uh, the definitions for the serialization and the transport bindings will actually specify how extensions will appear in that particular context. So the main spec itself basically uh, avoids that issue or punts on it. Um, and then the, the, like the HTTP spec itself will define how extensions will appear. As I said, I don't want to vote on this because Vlad did ask for another week or so because uh, he's doing some work. But I want to ask if there are any questions or concerns that we may want to discuss right now. We did discuss objections to this in the face-to-face, -face, right? Um, I know we talked about this at the face-to-face. -face. I don't remember many objections, but maybe I'm just not remembering correctly. Okay, I'll go look at the notes. Okay. Uh, are there, are there other reasons why? I'm sorry, are there arguments why this is a good idea? Basically because there were multiple, I'm sorry, if we have a, a bag for extensions, you're then left with a situation where you have multiple places for extensions. So for example, in the JSON serialization, um, you could have the bag for extension at one spot, but then JSON at the top level would allow you to add additional properties in there. So then the question comes, well, do you put extensions at the top level JSON or inside the bag? What if things appear in both places? Does one override the other? And it just, sound, it just seemed like it was going to be a point of potential interop or confusion. So we're trying to reduce the number of extensibility points down to one. So uh, are we talking about extensions or talking about providing some hooks to override uh, values? Just extensions. We're not talking about overriding things. So a good point that the PR raises is uh, the path to stabilizing a experimental extension, uh, basically promoting it to first class uh, is essentially a API breaking change if we use this bag of extensions. Um, and I think this is kind of a more general problem. It, it would also affect things like the Java SDK because the way you access extensions, I imagine, would be different from you know, actual getters and setters. Um, so I just wanted to raise that point. I don't really have a good solution for it yet. Right. So it sounds like some people may not have had a chance to think about this one, so which, which is fine. Uh, since, as I said, we're not going to necessarily vote on this today. So please take some time to review this, comment in the PR itself. Um, we don't want to wait for this phone call to go through larger issues around this. I'd rather do it offline in the PR itself. So please speak up in there if you guys have any concerns or questions. I do, like people are very quiet and I just kind of wonder like what people's temperature is around this one. Like are people like being quiet because they agree or being quiet because they disagree? I guess that's my question. Hmm. Both. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just for the sake of talking, I can say that I'm being quiet because I haven't actually read everything yet. <laughs> Is that fair? <laughs> That's very fair, yes. All right, cool, cool, cool. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So anyway, obviously this is this is kind of a big one in the sense that it's 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 a it's a it's a key design point, right? So please take the time to review it, look at the discussions that are going on in there and and comment on the PR so we can get some feedback on them either yeah. way. One of the one of the um, objections from the notes from the face to face was that it would be difficult to do in Proto, and I imagine that Google cares about that more than other places. So I will take it on as a AI to figure out um, what are like what Google's stance is going to be on like how we can do this. Okay, great, thank you. That'd be helpful. Yeah, I'd be kind of interested about that because if, if the answer comes back and says, well, 
we need it in a bag. And I'd love to know how they handle just JSON extensibility in general then. So, but thank you. All right, it sounds like people need more time to think about that one, which is obviously very fair. So we'll keep moving forward. I'm hearing big discussions right now. So, doo -doo -doo -doo. okay, next one, Kathy, application properties attribute. Would you like to talk to this one? Yeah. I think this one has been iterated uh, multiple times. And so I wrote it up. Um, I modified it based on uh, um, uh, our consensus in the face to face meeting. So people can take a look to see whether this is okay. Are there questions or comments on this one? Man, you guys are quiet today. <laughs> Markdown kind of likes more spacing between the titles and the um, explosion. There's more, more new lines, I think. Okay, well, I think that's a general concern thing. I, I don't think Kathy changed the pattern, but that may be something we want to address at a broader scale than Scott. But so, Kathy, um, mm -hmm. a couple of things. First, I'm not sure we want to allow spaces and names. Oh. Yeah, I can put a, a dash there. Yeah, well, no, it's not just for the example. I think we may need to add text. Um, but it's a string, right? Um, so. Well, definitely a string, but we may want to make it clear that the name can't have spaces in it because right now we always say is that it's a string, I believe. So are, is, is what you're saying is that you want the values to be usable as variables? <laughs> or? No, 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 I want the names to be non-spaced no, because in some cases these are going to get mapped to HTTP headers and I think spaces might have a cause problems there. So if that's what you say, you should probably say something that's suitable for use as an HTTP header. Yeah, that's why I have my suggestion was to say it has to be alphanumeric. I'm fine, you know, if we have that restriction, say no space. Yeah. Is that okay with everyone? Yeah, I think you want, I don't want to think, I don't think you want to just call it spaces in particular. I think you rather, I think it'd be better to focus on what are, what are the valid characters as opposed to what's invalid. So say it can only be alphanumeric, you know, or something like that. But the other thing is, um, I had a question. When you say flat structure, um, is that, does that imply the same thing as the value must be a string? No, or no. Is that different? That's different. So flat structure means, you know, we do not have hierarchy. Remember in the previous, there's a proposal which has hierarchical um, this attrib these properties. Right, but if the value can only be a string and it can't be an object, then you can't get a hierarchy. Isn't that correct? You can have, in, you know, like embedded, you know, several layers, you know, one is another uh, in, embedded layer. So this, what this means is, you know, it's all flat. It's the same level. Yes, but when you say that's only string, you're saying that you cannot have an object inside only strings. So it, it implies that's okay. flat. Yeah, that, that's why I was confused because these two sentences seem to be almost saying the exact same thing. And I want to make sure that that they actually are repeating each other. And if so, we should probably just reduce it down to one sentence. Yeah, I see. Okay, I see your point, right. Okay, yeah. If you, could probably say, you could probably say it must be a string and then give the example of we, 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 will, we don't want to have uh, structures underneath it. This is an example. I think, you know, we say the value is string and then I think it's I, I feel this is okay, right? It would be a flat structure, which means... When the value is string, it cannot be a not flat. It has, yeah, has or we can just remove that. That's fine, you know, if you think that's duplicate. Yeah, I think if you just remove the sentence, I think that yeah. makes the problem go away. Okay. Okay. So there are some changes that people want to see made. Are there other questions about this then? I probably so like one, one comment, though. I, I think that... that just making a string accomplishes the goal, but I think you should capture the group's decision that the hierarchy be flat someplace, but it's not already captured. 
Sorry, what's that again? You say I think you should capture the the, the group's um, goal that over time, as the spec is looked by on by other eyes, that the goal is to keep the structure flat. It's easy. You just merge the two sentences. Therefore, the string must or the value must be a string. Making sure that that sentiment's captured, you know, even though grammatically and it's going to be effective by changing to string. Matt, could you uh, provide sample text in, in this PR? <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm hearing that you would like the, to be a flat uh, structure. I think that the request, I think it could be, if this is, this is what I'm hearing from the group, I'm not participating in the discussions. If you wanna, if, if there's text there already that can be preserved, please do so. I mean, if somebody else's hands are gonna be in this section and it's just a sentence, I really don't wanna become involved. <laughs> but I'm just so making commentary. So Kathy, I think what Matt is suggesting is that you could say the value must be a string and then maybe add in parentheses or something here that says, because we want to keep it as a flat structure or something like that, just to give it a little bit of rationale to explain why we chose to keep it a string. Mm -hmm. All right, so what was the, I think that's what currently this text said, right? The key value pairs is a flat structure. Well, I, I think the point is you don't necessarily want this, this one to have to be a must because then it, people are going to wonder what's the difference between these two musts. I think what Matt is saying, just explain why this must here exists. And I mean, I, 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 lost, I mean, that's the same thing we've reached in other event standards is a flat hierarchy. I think it's important to state that as, as a goal, as, as, a, as a goal goal for that, for the structure of the schema. Okay, tell you what, so we don't rattle on this call about this. Kathy, I'll, I'll work with you offline to see if we can come up with some alternate text. How's that? Okay, yeah, okay. that's fine. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other comments on this one? Yeah, I think I must have missed the discussion about um, the name becoming application properties. Um, I was just curious. I, I believe it was simply properties before. That's right. Yeah, but you know, in the face to face, I think we agree on to change it to application properties. Yeah, because this is for this these properties will be used by the application. Right. So this actually goes a, a little bit to my comment that I did make on the P, PR itself in the body, which is here. I, I, I given the text that we have in this PR. As, as somebody coming new to the spec and I would read this, I would still be very confused as to when I would use this versus extensions. And I think we need some more clarity there if we're actually gonna keep these two extensibility points. Because one of the things we did agree to at the face-to-face -face was we were only gonna have a single extensibility point. And now we have two that seem like that they're almost the exact same thing. Yeah, I, I second that. It's still, to me, it's a still a bit confusing because this seems to be a place you can put a lot of things into it and what can be put into that and when, what should not be put into that is not clear to me. Right. Because really the only thing we have in here that says these are used by an event-based application. Well, to me, all these properties are going to be used by an event-based application. Yeah. Well, I, on the other side, I can understand that many applications may need something other than the top specs we put. Um, but I'm not entirely sure what should be put there. Yeah, see, I, and the other thing that related to that is, you know, take, for example, the center location, that could appear as an extension. And there's no guidance in our specification today as to why it should be in one spot versus the other. And I think that's a very large confusion factor, at least for me. Yeah, same here. Yeah, I guess as long as it seems that the decision to move extensions to top level property, then why not make all additional properties at top level. It's, it's already going to have to be dealt with in terms of serialization. There's a, there's a lot of background noise. If you're moving your phone, can I, guess, can I ask you guys to go on mute? 
I just feel we are like going around the loop again. Uh, I think you know in the face-to-face -face discussion, we already discussed this, right? On how we should restrict the scope. And then we come to consensus say, you know, um, this is for, originally I was thinking this is just for a correlation purpose, but then, you know, we think we are going to extend, I mean, this expand it. You said it's used by application to make it broader. Right, but Kathy, one of the things that we also agreed to at the face-to-face -face was to make sure that there's sufficient text in here to explain why we have these two different extensibility points and when one should be used instead of the other. And I don't think the text in here does that yet. And so I think we need, we need additional explanation text in here is, is, is the point I'm trying to get to. You know, I would that, also, yeah, go ahead. I would also agree with the point that if, uh, if we're making the move towards moving everything to the top level, that this property kind of becomes pointless at that point. It might, might as well just move everything to the top level and, and have it be on a use case basis. So, so, so Kathy, I think it might be useful if you could work on adding a little bit more text here to explain why this property or when this property should be used and not whatever other extensibility mechanism we have in the spec. Because I don't think it's clear right now. Yeah, like the original ones, I remember in the face-to-face, -face we say there's correlation tracing and, dip, uh, and one more thing um, that will be there. And then this kind of becomes whatever thing can be there. That's the part I, I didn't really follow. I don't think, you know, the tracing, uh, my understanding, the tracing was moved, right? Was Maybe moved not tracing. There's correlation, three things I, I remember. Uh, no, I think we clarify. Some of those are not really correlation. It's maybe different, you know, use the same, same, you know, same syntax, same word, but the semantics is different. Uh, I actually, I personally would like to just, this is for correlating, you know, multiple events from different event sources for that purpose. I can restrict that because I think, you know, Yes, yeah, so some kind of restriction would be good. Say what should be put into this part. Either, either whatever you can say, is, then we can take a look, see that makes. So what? Sense. So what? What people? What are the people? What are your suggestion? You think you know should be put in here because there's so many examples. Yeah. For correlating multiple events, there are you know different use cases. You can put different things there. I don't know. You know how we should, you know, restrict this. I think maybe, Kathy, if we could just use the, what you just mentioned before, it's to say it's to, to correlate events from uh, multiple event sources. Just have, have some text in there to, as way of explanation. Does that sound good? If we just restrict to that use case? To correlate. Actually, that's my original thought, to correlate multiple events, you know, from different event sources that will be used by the service application workflow. But I think that, you know, um, we cannot restrict it anymore or because the different use, there are many such use cases, which we're going to, there are many different types of events, different types of event sources. We cannot predefine like, you know, what, what properties will be used for um, correlating those events. So it's quite open to whatever part, whatever the, I mean, the, the developer, uh, they can put in, I mean, all the event, um, event vendor, they can put any properties there, which they think could be used to correlate multiple events. I, I thought that, um... Thomas in particular was hoping to use this property as uh, a space to put, um, what was he calling it? I guess he was calling it labels, right? I, I think, you know, we, we already agree on the, it's called properties. I don't think, I don't want to go back again to- No, 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 I'm not, I'm not suggesting change the name. What I meant was he wanted to use it for more than just correlation. He wanted to put labels in there. So, so that's, that's why, you know, 
if we just put correlation, it's already big enough, right? People are already thinking. Some people, I'm, uh, I guess, some people will think, okay, it's still not clear what should be put there. If we extend it or expand it to to include, you know, more use cases, it will be even harder for people to understand what should be put there. To clarify, I think that labels were brought up as an implementation of for correlation, not a goal in and of themselves. So it's fine to bring it back. Yeah, I think the problem is even for correlation, we cannot like give a more restriction on the things can put into this map. The, the biggest problem, at least for me, is this map is pretty much open. You can put whatever into any, any key value pairs. You're right. I think, yeah, you're right. It's kind of, yeah, it is kind of open, even just for correlation, because we cannot restrict the, the, the event vendor. To say narrow what? down to a few scenarios, say we support, like we can think of a few things that can kind of be general enough, but not uh, like totally open. Um, there are so many use cases, you know, we cannot say, oh, we include some of the use case for correlation, but the other, we do not. I don't think that's the right way to do it. This, this issue itself is open, right? Because there are so many different use cases. Correlation. Uh... We cannot even predict, say, oh, what, what, even we can say, okay, with all, we exhaust all the existing use cases, in the future, there will be more use cases. But, but that kind of also apply to the cloud events spec, right? When we define specs, there can be things happen in the future not included in the spec. That's why we have the extensibility point. Yeah, then we have extensions. So this thing, if something that we really don't know if there can be different use cases, we never, we cannot predict, which is true, definitely. What, 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 what should we do? I, I'm not clear on that. Yeah. I think, you know, we, I think, you know, we, we can just put it, I, I, like here, I already put, say, one usage, usage example is the application workflow can use this key value pair to correlate multiple events or social research service application, right, from different event sources. I think this itself, by itself, the nature is, is quite open. I don't think, you know, we really need to restrict it because if we restrict it, it will be wrong, you know. That's not its nature for this. So but if, if, if a field is normative, but a field, it feels required and, and normative, it needs people need guidance on how to use it. So you, you might not know the full set of examples that people might use it for, but at least they need a guiding set to give them an idea why it's required. Actually, I did you just raise something else, Matt. I'm not sure this should be required because what if I don't have any? Is there any um, reason why you made it required, Kathy? You, you always have something to correlate to multiple events, right? Well, what if it's just a single event that lives yeah, all by itself? So that's like, yeah. Okay, so if it's, okay, I, I think this issue is a little bit complicated, so let me try to clarify. Even it's a single event, right? So that event, if that event, from an application perspective, from an event source perspective, every event is a single event, right? But from an application perspective, that application could use multiple events, which includes that so-called single event. Right. You know, you know, I'm not sure whether I can get this across. You know, um, this is not from an event perspective. You know, every event is a single event. I'm not so the sure. event just put whatever. Yeah. So from a, the event just put whatever, which can uniquely identify. You know, its um, its properties is how to say, uniquely identify itself, put whatever there. And then it's up to the application to choose this. So, I mean, if, so I mean, if it's not explainable to this group, then how are we ever gonna give the users guidance on how to fill in the field? If the, if the application isn't trying to correlate, like if the application just takes an action when it gets an event and it's not trying to correlate events, what would they put in this field? If the application is trying to, what they put, okay, yeah. Um, so, 
So the application of what it works is this event source, event vendor, put this information there, right? Like this property, like this address or the floor or apartment ID. And then the application workflow will say, okay, I'm going to choose, you know, this, um, like for example, this uh, sensor location um, plus apartment ID and plus the floor building address, all these as my correlation ID. And then for another event, he's going to use the same information. But if, so that's in one application, and if I have another application that is not correlating events at all, like the application, um, it, gets, it gets an event and it performs some action, but it doesn't need to classify the events in any way. What would they, since this is required, what would they put in there? Okay, so that application does need to put any, um, to select any uh, attribute, any, I mean, field any keys from these properties. But that's the application level uh, is optional. But from the event source level is required because if there is an application that need to do correlate, if this information is not in that event, then there's a problem. So there's two aspects, but that's a very good question, Rachel, you asked. Um, so from the event source perspective, it's required because if the event does not have it, if application need it, it cannot do it. So I'm, I'm going to have to call time here just because we're out of time, basically. Um, but yeah. but please, people, please co add comments to the PR itself asking all these questions because these are all really, really good questions that we need clarity on. Um, but please put them into the PR itself so we can get some conversations going. Uh, we shouldn't be doing as much deep dive on the calls. We should be doing this on the PR itself. So please take time to review this and we'll revisit this point again next week. Um, uh, I think, you know, Doc, yeah, yeah. So, and we're running out of time. So I, I think this this thing itself by nature is really open. So um, I think when people post questions, uh, yeah, I'm going to try to answer, but if also I would like people to post uh, suggestions um, yeah. because I think it's open. I don't know how I should put any, any restriction or anything there. Um, yes. Yeah, please, obviously, yes. For, I, this goes for all PRs. You know, if you don't like a particular piece of text or you want to see something added, please add the specific text you'd like to see. Uh, but Kathy, please try to look for comments on the PR. That way you can respond as, as quickly as possible um, because we want to get the conversation going. And if people wait until, uh, you know, next Wednesday to respond to issues raised, then we're not going to get the back and forth that we need and come to resolution quickly. And this, we may have to wait another week or so to to try to okay. find a resolution. That's good. Okay. Or maybe I suggest, maybe we have a, um, a discussion again next, because if still has a confusion, I think we need more time to discuss this, you know, um, not yeah. just a simple PR, this one. That's fine, but let, let, let's try to get as much as we can inside the PR itself. At least then the, the, the discussions are uh, documented inside the PR. Okay, sure. So with yeah. that, we are taking a lot of time, but let me just quickly do the roll call for people who are late. Ginger, did you come off mute yet? Yeah. Okay, great. So. Uh, and Mark Fisher, you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay, Dan Barker. Here. Simon. Yep. And Stevo. I'm here. Yeah, excellent. Did I miss anybody else on the roll call? All right, cool. Thank you guys very much. We'll talk again next week. Bye, everybody. Thank you.